The Warwick University Atheist, Secularist, and Humanist Society invited Iranian-born human rights activist Maryam Namazi to do a speech at their school. And the response from the student union has created some controversy, and it's quite disheartening. So Maryam is a political leftist, and she does a bunch of refugee work, and she promotes human rights and secularism around the world. Uh, but she was declined. So here's the reasoning from the student union. Quote, After researching both her and her organization, a number of flags have been raised. We have a duty of care to conduct a risk assessment for each speaker who wishes to come to campus. There are a number of articles written, both by the speaker and by others about the speaker, that indicate that she is highly inflammatory and could incite hatred on campus. This is in contravention of our external speaker policy. And then they go through a list here. They say speakers must not incite hatred, violence, or call for the breaking of the law, are not permitted to encourage, glorify, or promote any acts of terrorism, including individuals, groups, or organizations that support such acts, must not spread hatred and intolerance in the community and thus aid in disrupting social and community harmony, must seek to avoid insulting other faiths or groups within a framework of positive debate and challenge, are not permitted to raise or gather funds for any external organization or cause without express permission of the, of the trustees. And they say, in addition to this, there are concerns that if we place conditions on her attendance, such as making it a member-only event and having security in attendance, asking for a transcript of what she intends to say, recording the speech, that she will refuse to abide by these terms. All right, so, uh, her main uh, focus is basically to promote secularism at the speech and to counter the Islamist narrative. So to counter the people who want to implement political Islam through allegedly peaceful means. The difference between a jihadist and an Islamist is that jihadists by force want to impose Sharia and implement Sharia. And Islamists want to, as the saying goes, use democracy against itself to uh, implement Sharia, not necessarily by killing people, but by setting up a system of Islamic law within uh, the confines of the government and as it's functioning right now, wherever the government might be. So that's her main thing. She promotes secular values, she promotes liberal values. When you go into her personal story, you see that she fled Iran during the revolution, and she's, you know, been promoting these different things her entire life. And the disheartening thing about this is, of course, when you talk about college campuses, the whole idea is it's supposed to be a place where you debate ideas. It's supposed to be a place where it's a free marketplace of ideas. And there can be bad ideas, there can be good ideas, there can be hideous ideas, there can be the best ideas that come up and okay, let's use our minds, let's be intellectual here, let's have discourse, and let's figure out what's going on. That's the whole idea of a college campus. But in essence, what I get from this letter here, where they declined her, it, it looks to me like it's the fucking opposite. <laughs> They're like, okay, uh, you have freedom of speech to say what we want you to say, here are the list of requirements. Now, again, some people might say, well, when you look at the particular arguments that this person made about X, Y, and Z, that's not a good argument. Okay, have a follow-up speaker that disagrees on parts. Guys, you don't get it. Like, what I'm saying here is, almost, I don't care what anybody's advocating. Should they have a chance to advocate it, no matter what it is? Yes! Ken Ham, who's a fucking creationist, who's wrong about basically everything ever. Should that guy, uh, you know, come to any university and give a speech and lay out his case? Sure, why not? And then guess what? Part and parcel of freedom is, after he lays out his utterly ridiculous false ideas, the students get to mock him, the students get to berate him in the questioning session, or you have Bill Nye come afterwards and lay out exactly why the guy's wrong, and then you move along. Okay, I know that we're not talking about the U.S. here, but just to give you guys an example of what embracing civil liberties really means, there was a famous Supreme Court case, I think it was the Skokie case, where the KKK wanted to march through a predominantly Jewish town and do a peaceful protest where, you know, they said all their racist, bigoted, anti-Semitic horse shit. Now, you would think that, well, the liberal thing to do is to say no, because they're a hate group. 
And they're a terrorist organization, so they need to shut up. But actually, you know who defended the KKK in that case? I hope you're sitting down. The ACLU. The American Civil Liberties Union. Why? Because this is an open and shut case. Their argument was incredibly simple. They said, we don't like these guys. We think they're assholes. We think they're fucking terrorists and they're a hate group. But if they're going to march through the town and all they're going to do is talk and do free speech and have the freedom to protest, it doesn't matter if I disagree with them. That is wholly irrelevant. So if we can stand up for the KKK, if we can stand up for Ken Ham, why the fuck would we not stand up for an anti-Islamist speaker? Now, I know nothing about the way she frames her arguments, and some people might say, well, she generalizes too much about Muslims. Maybe that's true, maybe that's not. I really don't know, because I've never seen her work. So, it, it's not, I, I'm not here to judge that. But, let's say she, let's say all the criticisms that are, that are, you know, uh, brought up against her are true. I still don't care. I still want you to let her speak. Because that's what it means to believe in civil liberties. That's what it means to be a liberal, and to embrace values, secular values here. So it doesn't, the point is, it doesn't make you more liberal. It doesn't make you, you know, a better person to say, I disagree with this person, I will shut them down because I don't want them generalizing about this group or that group. No, that makes you basically an authoritarian. I mean, I, I don't like it. I'm going to silence it. And then, by the way, after the fact, they came up with all types of bullshit rationalization arguments like, well, we didn't say that she couldn't speak here. Th there's another process that has to go through before we figure out whether or not she can speak here. Blah, 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 blah. Fucking let her speak, man. Let her speak. And then if you want to have somebody follow up to counter her narrative, go right ahead. Now, and on this one, people will probably disagree with me, but if, if you want a fucking Islamist to come counter her narrative, go ahead. Because guess what? I'm one of those people who actually believes that you can say whatever the fuck you want to say because let's say you are an Islamist and you lay out a case to implement political Islam well then I, I'll crush your arguments because your arguments suck and your ideas suck and that's the way that this works so enough coddling of the students and being super PC and trying to offend nobody the whole idea of of uh, believing in civil liberties and being liberal is the opposite of what you guys think it is